Hi, good evening, Sebastian. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, nice to have, be here. It's always great to talk with the community and let them know about what we're building. Uh, for people who don't know, my name is Sebastian, and I'm CTO and co-founder of DC Spark, and we're a crypto ecosystem builder company. And what that means is that we don't want to be a company building a specific product. We really want to consider kind of the full ecosystem. And that means that, for example, for Cardano, we contribute to Cardano itself. For example, we contribute to the REST implementation. We contribute to standards like Cardano improvement proposals. We contribute to user products like wallets and dApps. And we also do layer two solutions like Milkamera and off-chain solutions like Urbit. And an ecosystem is not just developer tools, not just products, it's also a community. And so at DC Spark, we try as much as possible to be involved with the community and we know we were involved in Twitter and on Telegram and all these places. And so it's always great to kind of be here and, and talk to the community and, and let them know what we're doing and hear their, their feedback. Thank you, that was wonderful. You saved me a lot of time introducing you. <laughs> it was great. So I do want to say something in Chinese uh, for the Chinese viewers. Uh, sure. Hello, You're quite known in the Chinese community. You have your own nickname. Uh, like the handsome Seba. I don't know why people say that. It wasn't me. Seba呢,他以前是在Emergo工作,也是由Roy前包的开发者,现在他是自己创建了DCSpark这个公司,相当于是在做一个策略,今天我们要谈的就是他们的策略Milcomeda. <笑><笑> Thank you, Sebastian. So you already gave us a little bit brief background about you. Now, DCSpark, can you tell us a bit more about the relation uh, between DC Spark and Milcomeda, because DC Spark has a lot of offerings, and I don't think a lot of people necessarily understand all of them. Yeah, so as I mentioned, DC Spark is an ecosystem builder company, which means that we're working on multiple things in parallel. One of the largest projects we're working on is Milcomeda. So Milcomeda is a, a project that DC Spark is helping build that is basically a way for uh, people who have Slady smart contracts to deploy their Slady smart contracts on Cardano. So one of the problems we have with Cardano right now is that the only way to write smart contracts is with Haskell and Plutus, right? And this is a, a large you know, barrier for developers who maybe don't know these languages. And it's also a large barrier for tooling, right? Because it's a new ecosystem was only released this year. And so now we have to build auditing software. We have to build deployment tools as a whole, you know, kind of ecosystem that needs to be built around the smart contract programming language. But a lot of people want to deploy on Cardano today, right? Ethereum right now, the transaction fees are too high. Developer experience is, is good, but the platform itself is failing the developers. And, you know, we want to be able to go to these developers who are looking for an alternative and be like, you don't need to wait, you can deploy on Cardano now and you can, you don't have to rewrite your smart contracts in Plutus. You don't have to learn Haskell you can deploy on Milcomeda and get access to the Cardano users. And one of the important things about Milcomeda is that it's not a bridge to Ethereum, right? So instead, it allows you to deploy Solidity smart contracts on a side chain, and the side chain connects to Cardano such that the transaction fees you pay for Solidity smart contracts is also an ADA. So you don't need to buy some special token. You don't need to swap for ETH. You can have your ADA bring it on to Milcomeda, call your you know, Slate Smart Contract, do whatever DEX swap you want, mm -hmm. and do all that without having to get access to a new token, which I think is not only a much better user experience, it also makes things much better from a regulatory perspective, because a lot of countries have you know, strict regulations on you know, what kind of tokens are available. For example, in Japan, uh, where I'm located, you, know, you can only use you know, certain cryptocurrencies kind of approved by the regulatory bodies. And so with this solution, you know, you don't have to worry about the tax implications of switching tokens. You don't have to worry about the regulatory implications of switching tokens. You can, you know, use smart contracts on Milcomera with your ADA and not have to worry about it. Okay. So if I understood you correctly, Milcomera isn't, you know, exactly like you use Ethereum, but you can use Ethereum dApps with ADA fees. Is that what it is? Yes. Yes, exactly. And we think this is great because it's complementary to other solutions in the ecosystem. So two other projects that are similar to Milcomera but actually work together is KEVM 
and the ERC20 converter. Mm -hmm. So the ERC20 converter is a project that IOHK is working on to be able to take an Ethereum ERC20 token and bridge that to Cardano, right? And this is different from what we're doing at Milkamera because Milkamera is not connecting to Ethereum mainnet. Mm -hmm. It's adding Solidity compatibility to Cardano. So you could, for example, take your ERC20 token on Ethereum, use the ERC20 converter to bring that onto Cardano. Once you have your ERC20 token on Cardano, you can then move that token to Milkamera and then use your Solidity dApps on Milkamera as if you never really left Ethereum, but now all the fees are in ADA, you get around all the congestion. So these are kind of complementary solutions. And another project um, people talk about often is, is KEVM and Yella. And they're kind of maybe a bit older projects. So people who joined the Cardano ecosystem, ecosystem recently maybe don't know about them, but these were um, projects created by IOHK in partnership with Runtime Verification to improve the formal verification of Solidity smart contracts. And we can also make deployments of Milkamera that leverage these protocols. So people at the time were asking, well, Yella is an interesting technology to have better smart contracts on, on Cardano for people who don't want to use Plutus, but how do we get this actually connected to Cardano? And now I think we have a good solution, which is we'll be able to use Milkamera to deploy, um, you know, this kinds of new interesting virtual machines if there's interest in, in the community. Oh, definitely there's interest. Uh, could you explain that a bit more? Let's take an example. Uh, let's say if you want to use a dApp on Ethereum, whatever that might be, how do people use that in combination with ERC20 converter and Milkometer? Is that a sort of like a entire uh, customer journey? They use ERC20 token and then they right. use Milkometer. Yeah, so Milkamera is a sidechain, which means that it's not connected to the Ethereum mainnet and has its own block history. So at the genesis block of Milkamera, you know, there won't be any transactions, no smart contracts deployed. And so that means that, you know, we're looking for developers to work with us to deploy smart contracts on Milkamera. We already have a lot of projects that have um, committed to working with us. So we have two bridges, we have a stable coin, we have some DEXs, we have oracles. So we're gonna have a lot of you know partners um, announcing that they're gonna be deploying on Cardano through Milkamera. Um, but if, if you have a specific smart contract you want to deploy, you would first kind of get MetaMask, connect to the Milkamera chain mm -hmm. and then deploy as if you were you know deploying on, on Ethereum, but just you're deploying on Milkamera instead. From a user perspective, um, the way we want the user experience to look like is that actually we, we want the users to not have to even know they're using Milkamera, right? Because like I mentioned, the base fee of, of Milkamera is going to be ADA. Mm -hmm. There's no need for you to buy a new token or anything. So why should the user need to know they're using Solidity? Like when you're using a, an application on your phone, you, do you care which programming language they used? Not really, right? You just care about the user experience. And so we want to make Milkamera be the same thing where you're going to use a dApp on Cardano and you don't know if it's written in Solidity. You don't know if it's written in Plutus. You don't know if it's written in something else. You just want to use the dApp and, and use that user experience. And that's what we really want to do. And so to get there, there's two um, important projects that we've been working on. One of them is concept or wrapped smart contract. So mm -hmm. it's a new concept we're introducing which is a way for you to call a Solidity smart contract through Plutus. So from a user perspective, you're calling a Plutus smart contract. And when you call this Plutus smart contract, this Plutus smart contract forwards your call to Milkamera, computes the result on Milkamera, forwards the result back to the Cardano mainnet, and then gives you the result. So from a user perspective, you don't even realize you're using Solidity because from your perspective, you're just calling a Plutus smart contract. So, so how fast one, is that? So the speed of this depends uh, mostly on the bridge speed, right? So the delay is from sending a transaction card down and having confirmed on the bridge and then the opposite way around. Mm -hmm. uh, so we think probably in most cases, it'll be like 20, 30 minutes is what we're aiming for. Mm -hmm. um, but this will change over time as we um, launch Mail Comedy V2 and Mail Comedy V3, which will introduce new technologies, which we hope will make it um, you know, better and faster. The other thing that's also related is on trust. Right? Whenever you're introducing a new system, people 
um, are not sure if they should trust it. Mm -hmm. And that's that's good because that's what you should do in the crypto ecosystem. You should never you know, trust people unless they've earned your trust. And right now with the first version of Miltomata, we're aiming to launch with a set of 32 validators. Yeah. Right. And these will, will not be us. It'll be, you know, companies that are building, you know, in the Cardano ecosystem, companies that are building in the crypto ecosystem. And we hope to get a diverse set of people. Um, and later on, we'll be able to have a Milcomata DAO where we can, you know, bring in new validators and anybody will be able to apply to be a validator. But even if we had this, you know, large decentralized validator set for Milcomata, it still means that the users would have to trust the Milcomata validators. Mm -hmm. And this is not really the user experience you want, because it means that if you're using a Milcomata DAP, the DAP would, should show you like a warning, like, by the way, you're going to use a Milcomata DAP. Are you sure you trust the Milcomata uh, network? Um, and we don't want the user to have to have this you know, prompt, we want them to just be able to trust the DAP and not have to worry about it. And so to do this, we're working on new research for a new scaling solution called Rollups that you, uh, some of your viewers may know from the Ethereum ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And this is a scaling solution that was initially developed for Ethereum. Um, but we think we can reuse this and make a special version of it, uh, special tuned for Milcomata that will basically allow you to use Milcomata smart contracts without having to trust the Milcomata validators. So even if the Milcomata validators um, are dishonest and don't process your withdrawal or don't process transaction correctly, um, all that will be visible from the Cardano mainnet and you'll be able to get your funds back. And so this is ultimately the kind of user experience you want where they don't have to even, not only do they not have to know they're using Milcomata, they don't even have to trust Milcomata. And that's, you know, the kind of end goal. And I'll see this is a, a huge R&D project. Um, and that's why the Milcoma team has grown to a large size and DC Spark in general is at 30 people now. And, you know, the way we're partially funding this is through catalyst proposals. So we, we've made catalyst proposals in the past um, for Milcomata, and we're going to be open sourcing uh, some of these in January. For example, like Mil Milcomata, the first version uses a multi-sig. On Cardano, I think we're probably the first project to use multi-sig on Cardano. And uh, uh, we had to build a whole like, multi-sig coordination system for that. And we'll be open sourcing that uh, fairly shortly. Um, you asked earlier about the confirmation times mm -hmm. for transferring across the bridge. You may note that our confirmation times are faster than a lot of other projects quotes. And it's because we built a novel um, rollback handler to improve the confirmation time. And that's also funded through Catalyst and we'll be open sourcing that as well. And we have some more Catalyst proposals for the next funding round. For example, this rollup solution I just proposed mm -hmm. um, is something that we're actively researching. We're talking to universities about this topic as well and trying to build their research arm, but it's kind of a, a large complicated research endeavor. And so we have a Catalyst proposal uh, to help fund this research. Wow. That was like half of my questions list answered in five minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. I do have some extra questions. So first of all is the issue of congestion. Imagine so many users are flooding into Mikometa. How would that impact like the speed? The, is that going to be exponentially slower for them? Or you already have some mechanism in right. place? Yeah, so will we, we will do um, better than the Ethereum mainnet because Milcomata does not use proof of work, right? And so we don't have to deal with this overhead. Instead, for the first version, we're using IBFT uh, 2.0 for people who are technical and know. Um, but basically, the Milcomata validator set is a known set of people. And whenever the validator set updates, this is visible to everybody, right? You, there's like a Milcomata DAO, you vote to change the validator set, you add somebody you, or you remove somebody. And because it's kind of like a mostly static system, um, you can make a system that's more efficient than Ethereum mainnet or Cardano mainnet, where it's an open system, where anybody, anytime you can become a Cardano you know, block producer and nobody can stop you, mm -hmm. right? And although that increases the decentralization, um, it does have a performance impact. And so because the Milcomata protocol um, does not have this kind of open participation for the 
block production. If you want to become a block producer, you have to apply to the Milkamna DAO. Uh, we can improve the throughput. And although this has implications on decentralization, on decentralization, we're hoping to combat this with the roll-up solution I mentioned earlier to make that even if something happens, um, that you still get the security properties um, inherited from Cardano. And that's what makes rollups so powerful. And that's why so many companies are looking into rollups right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's largely dependent on your validators, isn't it? Yeah, so if we have you know honest validators and everybody's making blocks, then the speed of Milkamada should be comparable to other um, projects that use uh, BFT uh, consensus for their side chains. And so although Milkamada works different than other projects out there, um, the idea of using a BFT uh, system is, is not a, a new one. In fact, BFT came before uh, blockchain itself. And so we should be able to hit you know, TPS in the hundreds, mm -hmm. uh, which is comparable to kind of other um, you know, projects out there. The thing about Milkamada is that our core value add is not so much throughput. You know, we're not a scaling company for Ethereum. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, we're, uh, you know, interoperability solution for Cardano, right? And because Milkamada just uses Ethereum, we didn't do any like special tweaks, didn't change any parameters, mm -hmm. you know, any research that goes on in the Ethereum ecosystem for scalability is stuff that we can reuse for Milkamada and bring these, uh, you know, new technologies to Cardano users as well. Mm -hmm. Understood. So you mentioned you have 32 validators. Have they all been selected yet? No, not currently. Uh, we will have an open process for this and mm -hmm. uh, we're looking for people. Notably, we're looking for people in the ecosystem that have a proven track record. Mm -hmm. And so part of that will definitely be state pools. Um, so we've had uh, some outreach to existing state pools to see if they're willing to become um, the common validators. And this will be an ongoing process. So we're definitely not uh, done, mm -hmm. you know, selecting people. This is still uh, early days. And so if somebody listening to this is a state pool operator and wants to be involved, definitely reach out to us and uh, we'll get in touch. Okay, so I'm going to ask on their behalf, if, uh, if you could disclose maybe even just part of your selection criteria. Yeah, I think the, the two main things are want a track record, right? We don't want a stake pool that was just launched because we want to know that you're aligned with the Cardano ecosystem, that you have the right values. Um, so this is, you know, one criteria. The other criteria is technical skill. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to be able to set the side chain, it's a protocol that's in development, right? As I mentioned, we'll have a V1 and a V2 and a V3. And so it means that you'll need to, you know, have the time to yeah. understand you know, the technicals of how this works. And so I know there's a lot of stake pools on Cardano that are, you know, not so technical in nature that are more like, oh, let's fund some, you know, charity operation, which is totally fine uh, for the Cardano mainnet. Um, but for, you know, our specific case, we're looking for people that have, you know, a bit more technical knowledge. So you don't mm -hmm. need to be like a master programmer, uh, but just, you know, kind of uh, your way, knowing your way around um, computers, it will also be like an important criteria. Okay. Could I say that um, the technical know-how and the uh, energy that they have is more important than the popularity they have? Yeah, I think so. I think if, if they have the right uh, mindset and the right skills, it's mostly what we're looking for. You know, at DC Spark, um, the, the, the core philosophy of the company is that right now, a lot of companies in the blockchain space they don't care about the philosophy of blockchain. They're here to make a quick buck, you know, bend the rules as far as they can until they get caught and then, you know, walk away. Mm -hmm. And we've seen so many companies come in and disappear. And, you know, we, we just couldn't stand seeing this anymore. And, and so we started our own company and we want to do it, you know, the right way, which is why we're doing, you know, Cal's funding and all our projects are all open source, MIT license, so anybody can use them. And, you know, all these, proposals we're doing for Catalyst, they're all open source as well. And we were even doing, you know, projects like Fricata, which is like a fractionalized NFT project. Mm -hmm. And that was like one of the first dApps on Cardano. And we didn't make any business plan for this. We just 
said, you know what, the Cardano ecosystem like needs somebody who knows Cardano well to write a, a DAP that people can use a template. So let's let's write one, publish it, make it an MIT, and and see what people do with it. And you know, we were looking for people who kind of share this philosophy of actually you know caring uh, about the ecosystem and growing the ecosystem and growing you know the blockchain space. And if you're here to become a validator on Milk Gunma, just to you know increase your stake pool's revenue, like you know I understand that you're a business, and so that's something that you care about. Uh, but that's not the the main thing that we're looking for. That was good. That was good to know. So you mentioned something very interesting, philosophy, right? Can you tell us just in very simple a few words, even maybe what's the philosophy of DC Spark? Yeah, so it, it kind of comes from, you know, our background, right? So me, Nico and Robert Kornacki, who are the three founders of DC Spark, we all previously worked for Emergo. And for people who don't know, Emergo is one of the companies that helped start the Cardano project. And, you know, when we were part of Emergo, we were looking at the Cardano ecosystem and the blockchain ecosystem. And we saw that there was not really any company that was coming in and being like a holistic ecosystem builder company. There was occasionally some companies that came in to build specific products, you know, like Ada Pools built an Explorer, Ada Light came in and built a wallet. And these are all great. And we need these companies that come in and, and build, you know, products that, that help grow the ecosystem. Um, but it, it was kind of unfortunate that the only kind of large company was IOHK, mm -hmm. right? Cardano Foundation never really stepped up the way people were hoping they would. Mergo never really stepped up the way we were, people were hoping a Mergo would. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can't as an ecosystem just depend on IOHK forever. That's not a decentralized ecosystem if there's just one company building everything. And, you know, other ecosystems have multiple company. So for example, Ethereum has consensus, they have Web3, they have the Ethereum Foundation, and all of them have their own skill set, their own mentality, and they're pushing stuff in a different direction. And that's what a healthy ecosystem looks like. Obviously, Ethereum has its own problems, they could do better, um, but I think it's a kind of step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And so we said, okay, well, what, what would it take to get there for Cardano? And, you know, that's kind of why we structured DC Spark the way it is. It's not just like a single product company. We, we could have said, let's just do Milk Kamala and we'll only do Milk Kamala and we'll focus 100% on Milk Kamala and just that. And we would have been a successful company and I'm sure we would have, you know, uh, you know made good revenue and had a lot of users. Um, by the end of the day, uh, we thought that more than just a specific solution, you know, Cardano needs, a, you know, a holistic company that's contributing to the core protocol. Like we contribute to the Rust node we contribute to Cardano improvement proposals. We contribute to user products, to dApps, the whole end-to-end. -end. And that's what we really need. Um, and other ecosystems can't have companies come in and appear like, like we did and, and tackle all these tough problems. But the Cardano ecosystem can do it because we have you know, projects like Catalyst that allow, the, allow companies you know, to come in and, and get funding from the community to build you know, these tools. and um, not only just build stuff, but build it, you know, right, build it publicly, you know, open source and everything. And we think that the Cardano ecosystem is in a good position to mm -hmm. continue growing this kind of community because Catalyst, you know, keeps growing uh, vote by vote. And in the future, there'll be other initiatives like DCF um, for companies to have, you know, longer term, you know, funding and contracts in the Cardano ecosystem. And you know, with, with DC Spark, we saw that there was a need and, you know, we saw an opportunity and we've seen so many companies come in and take advantage of protocols and just extract values from ecosystems and walk away. And we didn't want, you know, these people to, you know, be the ones who take these positions. Um, you know, we want people who actually care, who have contributed years of their life to this protocol, to this project. Um, to be there and make sure that, you know, things are moving in the right direction. What you just said and what DC Spark has been doing, I'm sure many people could resonate with what you just mentioned. You're, people can see that you're in the community and for the community. And that's why I think uh, so many people have a lot of respect for you and for DC Spark. So 
I do want to ask you along the lines of Catalyst, um, how do you think Catalyst funding has helped DC Spark? Like to what extent? Uh, in my understanding, it's not a place where you can ask for a lot of funding. And you do have a team of almost 30 people. So I wonder, like very brutally honest, financially wise, how, how much does that help you? Yeah, so Catalyst is uh, help, but is unfortunately not the entire story because Catalyst has two problems. One, it's still early days. So there's a lot of competition for very little funding, right? And so we can't ask for that much. Otherwise, we'd end up taking the whole budget. And that's not really fair to all the other companies who want to build on Cardano. And the other thing is that Catalyst right now is every three months. Mm -hmm. And if you have a company of 30 people, you know, they're not just random people. They're people that you're taking care of as a company. And you, you know, you want them to be on this journey with you all the way through. And you can't risk the livelihood of, of these companies based off a public vote, right? So we can't have like every three months go to our employees and say like, all right, guys, vote's coming. Hope we, we win and you get to keep your job. Like that's not a, a, the right way to treat people, right? And so Catalyst helps supplement the efforts that we do. Mm -hmm. um, but we also have sought out, you know, external funding uh, from other, you know, well-known um, members of the crypto community. And you can find some of this information on the DC Spark um, Medium post mm -hmm. where we've, we've talked about some of the um, fundraising we've done. Um, we are still majority owned by the founders. Uh, so it's not like we're, you know, some random VC play. Mm -hmm. um, but we just thought that although we saw, you know, a path forward to be, you know, funded entirely by the community through projects like Catalyst, uh, waiting until we can do that would be a mistake because the protocol needs people now, right? We don't want to wait one year, two years, and then start then, you know, we can start building now, um, but to build, you know, a stable company. Uh, where we can treat our employees the right way uh, means that we have to do like a mix of funding for now. Thank you for the transparency. Uh, I think a lot of people might underestimate, you know, the money needed to support a medium-sized team like that. And we can't really just hope uh, the community will just vote for you and live off that. So appreciate this pragmatic approach uh, to DC Spark. So let's talk a bit about December 15th. Obviously, that's a big day. So can you tell us a bit more what happens on that day? What kind of people would be able to interact with Milkomeda? Yeah, so currently Milkomeda is in a private testnet. So it's deployed on the Cardano testnet and only usable by a certain set of people. December 15th will be the first time where we're launching on mainnet. And although it'll be a mainnet release, it'll still be kind of like a whitelisted mainnet release. And the reason we're doing it this way is because um, every protocol, no matter how much we spend on being careful, no matter how hard we work with our auditor partners, um, you can never be 100% sure. And so we thought it would, it would be irresponsible to, you know, just deploy on mainnet and see what happens. And so we're taking, you know, a step-by-step -step approach. So the first deployment on mainnet will be with a small set of approved people and we'll be growing that list over time and eventually remo removing that list entirely so that anybody can use the protocol. And uh, we thought this was a much safer way to deploy. And, you know, if anything happens, it kind of mitigates the risk. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that allows us to do this is that we've been um, thinking a lot about smart, smart, contract, smart contract upgradability on Cardano uh, to allow us to deploy on mainnet early and you know, upgrade smart contracts uh, as we write new features. And uh, we actually have a catalyst proposal on this topic for the upcoming fund. So if you're also a, a company who wants to you know, think about how to write upgradable smart contracts, um, definitely check out our proposal and get in touch with us. We have some ideas on how to um, improve the system that, that uh, we're currently designing, um, but that's kind of our, our end goal to, um, you know, be able to deploy something now and get projects on Cardano now. 
Because right now people on, on Twitter, on Telegram, you're asking where are the Cardano projects? We want the projects on Cardano now. And you know we have to uh, be responsible about the speed at which we're deploying and take our time and, and do this whitelist first and work with auditors and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but we also can't wait too long because people you know, want to use Cardano now. And so this was, you know, us trying to, you know, um, how should I say, do the best of both. Yeah, the balance, right? Can't yeah, have both. Yeah. Excellent. So December 15th, normal people, it's not like everybody could use it. So if we're really curious, how do we find out the feedback or the experience those whitelisted people have? Is there going to be videos or introductions after they have tried it out? Yeah. Yeah, so currently we have a DC Spark Discord channel. And in that Discord channel, we have a Milkomeda section where people are currently talking about Milkomeda. And so anybody is welcome to join that channel and talk about their experience and talk with our team. Um, we do also um, plan to make this kind of sign up process to the whitelist easier over time up until we eventually remove it. Um, so, you know, this is not something that you have to wait like three or four months. This is like, you know, in, in December, January, we'll be starting to, you know, onboard uh, more and more regular users mm -hmm. and especially developers as well. Um, so this should not be like a long wait. And if you want to get involved, you know, now's the time to kind of step up and, and, and reach out to us. We also are in parallel working on the user experience. So we do have a wallet that we've been building called Flint Wallet. And this wallet, um, our goal is to make it a wallet that supports not only Cardano smart contracts, but also Ethereum smart contracts as well natively. Mm -hmm. And so from the same wallet, you'll be able to use um, both at the same time. And so this kind of goes into our philosophy that the user shouldn't have to know if they're using you know, Plutus or if they're using Solidity, it shall be kind of the same user experience. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're building a wallet that we hope will eventually grow to provide this user experience. And the first version right now just supports Cardano, doesn't support the full Milkomeda experience yet, but it does support wrapping your ADA onto Milkomeda. So if you want to get on the whitelist and then start using um, Milkomeda, the first step will be to download Flint, um, wrap your ADA through Flint, and then at that point, you'll switch to MetaMask for the kind of DAP user experience. Um, but we hope to eventually kind of remove that step and have all this available from within Flint so that you'd be using the same, you know, Cardano uh, wallet and, you know, have all this provided from the same location. Okay. So Flint is already available for download, isn't it? Yes. So we have the beta release. So similar to how uh, Milkamera is kind of like only available to you know, a certain set of people. Mm -hmm. uh, Flint right now is in kind of like a semi-public beta. So we have a download link on our Discord for anybody who wants to check it out. And we have a new release every week. So every week um, release a new update. Um, you know, this week we're releasing NFT support. Um, probably next week we'll be releasing the first beta of the DAP connector. And so we're going to have, you know, more and more features added on every week um, as we build towards this kind of full Milkamera support. Okay, so the in eventual goal is that uh, you wouldn't need MetaMask, you would just use a uh, Flint wallet. Yes, that's the idea. Because, oh. you know, we want Cardano users to have the smoothest experience possible. And I don't think the smoothest experience is, is having them go download some, you know, Ethereum specific tooling and, and have to learn all of that. We want them to just have all this available um, directly to them. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So if somebody uh, say they want to join the whitelist, what's the best way they get in contact with you? Is it through Discord or Twitter or? Yeah, Discord is probably the easiest place to see updates, concrete updates in, in chat. Um, obviously we have Twitter as well, um, where we post updates on our, our Twitter account. And, you know, I'm on Telegram as well. If people, if, you know, there's a company watching this video and they want to deploy on Milkamera, and you want to reach out to us as a company, you know, um, definitely reach out to me on Twitter. I'm in your um, Telegram group as, as well. So if people can reach out to me on Telegram through your, mm -hmm. your Telegram channel. And uh, we, we try our best to uh, handle all requests. We get a lot of requests every day. Um, and uh, 30 people may sound like a large team. It's, it's, it's not enough for, 
um, everything we're trying to do. So, you know, I appreciate that people are, are slightly patient as we're, you know, heads down trying to, you know, get this deployed. Uh, we will we'll try our best to, you know, get to everybody. Okay, excellent. We might just use this chance, you know, if you're hiring new people, why not use this platform? Give a shout out what kind of uh, people you're looking for. We can put a video out, more people will see it. Yeah. Yeah, so the main thing we're looking for is developers. So, you know, obviously blockchain knowledge is a plus, knowledge of Rust and TypeScript is, is usually uh, beneficial. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're looking for people who, you know, are, are good programmers. And that's the kind of main skills that we're looking for. We occasionally have, you know, job postings for uh, non-developer roles. For example, currently we're hiring designers. Um, I think we already hired a few. I think we're looking for maybe one more still. So I think that job position may be still up. And we do occasionally look for people for our social media team. And so we're kind of growing our social media uh, team as well. So we do have a career page, careers.dcspark.io. Mm -hmm. And so if, if people are interested, they can check out our career page and see the updated positions we have at any given time. Okay, excellent. And one last question about Milkometer. When can normal people expect to be able to use Milkometer? Yeah, I think January. Wow, that's is, fast. Is yeah. Well, well, we'll hope to launch in December with the whitelist and then we'll be growing the whitelist over time. So, um, you know, how fast we'll be able to remove these restrictions. It depends on, you know, how well things go. Um, but if people come in and get involved and, and we can add them on the list, you know, that should be doable in January. What do you think would be the long-term impact of Milcomeda on the entire Cardano ecosystem? Yeah, I think the, the end goal is to, you know, twofold, one, to bring more developers, right? Um, Cardano right now uh, has a lot of unique tooling to Cardano that has its own benefits, but uh, we need more developers. And so, uh, you know, I, I hope that Milkomina brings a lot more developers onto the Cardano uh, blockchain. And then the other thing is just uh, more uh, value to Cardano. Right now there's a, a you know, limited set of dApps you can use and that will kind of grow over time at, at, through Plutus. Uh, by the end of the day, as a company, we don't see the future being a single blockchain, right? It's, it's clear at this point that the future is multi-chain. There won't just be Cardano. There's going to be Bitcoin. There's going to be Ethereum. There's going to be Solana. There's going to be all these other projects. And they're all going to have their own specific use case and their own, you know, ecosystems. And we want to, you know, make it as easy as possible to interoper interoperate, mm -hmm. if that's the word. Uh, with, with, you know, every other ecosystem without really having to, you know, think about it. And so, you know, I think uh, because everybody really knows that this is where the blockchain ecosystem is going, we're having more and more blockchains every day, not the other direction. Um, you know, Cardano has always had interoperability as one of its key pillars of its roadmap. And so I think this is um, really where we're trying to uh, push Milkometa to be, you know, a great interoperability solution for the Cardano ecosystem and, you know, make sure that we're not on, on a lonely island. I've seen like a few ecosystems, like blockchain ecosystems maps that shows you like connections between different communities. So for example, the, you know, you have like Ethereum that's connected to Avalanche, it's connected to like Binance chain. It's, you know, all the same kind of platform, a lot of the same people. Mm. And then you have, you know, like Bitcoin connected with, you know, Litecoin. And then Cardano is always like in its, circle on its own, right? We really have like our, our own unique community with our own unique tooling, our unique philosophy. Um, and, you know, that has its, its advantage in some way, but we also need to, you know, connect with the rest of the ecosystem out there and, and welcome, you know, any users, developers that want to come onto our platform and, and really uh, think and, and hope that Milkomeda will be a, a key uh, point in that. Mm. Thank you. Sounds very promising and extremely open-minded. I think that's what we need in Cardano and in the entire ecosystem. So uh, interview is coming to an end. You are insanely efficient. 
So I might as well just load more information, you know, to bombard the audience. They're going to love it. <laughs> Your catalyst proposal. Do you want to tell us a bit more like the title, where they can find it, how they can vote for it? Yeah, so actually we have a lot of catalyst proposals. I think we have 16 of them. Um, but because this is too many catalyst proposals, um, mm -hmm. we split them up into three categories. So let me just explain to you the categories. So we have something called DC Spark Core, which we think are the core proposals that really help Cardano. Right. So for example, in this category, we have the smart contract, smart contract upgradability um, design pattern that we've been working on. We have fractionalized NFTs V2, where we're basically going to add the ability to fractionalize not just a single NFT, but a set of NFTs. So for example, if you want to fractionalize a bunch of images, or more realistically, if you want to fractionalize a set of tokens that represents a uh, permission for DAO. Like you have a Plutus DAO and you have like a set of multiple UTXOs that represents some sort of permission. You could fractionalize the set of um, UTXO uh, tokens in these UTXOs and then um, spread that amongst the DAO members. Um, this is a new function that we're adding. So this is part of fractionalized NFTs V2, for Kata V2. We have the scalability um, solution for um, rollups that I was talking about earlier. We're, we're hoping to take this roll-up scalability solution and bring it to, you know, Cardano and Solana um, so that people who use Milkometa um, don't have to trust the Milkometa validator sets. Um, we do have also another proposal for UTXO management. So one of the problems that um, probably you as somebody who's uh, active in the NFT space are aware of is that there's right now no good way of managing UTXOs. Mm -hmm. And the end result for people who don't know is that if you buy like too many NFTs, your wallet gets like stuck in a bad state and then you're trying to like send transactions, but they keep not working. And the people's solution to this right now is like, oh, like if you're in this case, like go to CC Vault, mm -hmm. or if you're in this case, go to NAMI, but it's all like this one, like a Euro probably is the best one for this. Yeah. And this is not great. And the reason we're in this situation is because no wallet has the time to like solve this problem properly. So everybody comes up with their own kind of heuristic and then it just ships that. Um, and what we really need is some sort of, you know, open source library that really thinks deeply about this, that provides, you know, a write-up about, you know, different approaches that can be taken, the dis advantages, disadvantages of each one, and it provides the, all that into a library. And then this will be re reusable by all the wallets. And also importantly, it will be reusable reusable by dApps because dApps have the exact same problem where um, protocols like, you know, the Sunday swap have a bunch of users and now they're, you know, smart contract is a bunch of UTXOs everywhere. And depending on their use case, they may need to like consolidate these in some way if they want that functionality. Um, but right now there's no good way to like consolidate these UTXOs over time and to, to like, you know, manage the liquidity pools. Um, and so, you know, we hope that instead of everybody reinventing the wheel, um, you know, we can uh, build this once as an open source solution and share it with everybody. Historically, the only people who bother to solve this are exchanges and they never open source it because this is their competitive advantage, mm -hmm. right? Um, but the benefit of Catalyst, as I mentioned, is that you can get funding to build something and make it open source and reusable for everybody. And, you know, that's really, um, you know, unique value proposition to Cardano, the fact that, you know, instead of getting stuck in these, you know, closed source companies all competing with each other, we can make a proposal for an open source version and just solve the problem properly and just share with everybody. And then uh, we had a fifth one, I'm blanking on it. We have too many proposals. Let me just look it up real quick. Um, while I'm doing that, so that's DC Spark Core which is like the core proposals. And those are only 200K uh, mm -hmm. total funding that we're asking for, which is not a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, probably too, way too little money for the number of people we have. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, Catalyst right now is only 8 million per fund. Yeah. And a lot of the categories were only like 200K for a single category. And if we ask for too much, we're like pushing other people out, which we didn't want to do, right? We can't have the Cardano community just be IHK. 
but we can't have it just be Irish Canadian DC Spark either, right? <laughs> it has to be, you know, room for everybody to get involved. And so we tried to, you know, slightly lowball in our proposals or like put them in strategic categories to try and, and um, you know, make room for other people. Um, yeah, I understand. It's, it's kind of hard. I'm also a proposer. Um, you got to have to be strategic about your asking as well. Yeah. Um, and so the other categories that we have, oh yeah, so the fifth one, sorry, the fifth one is a Plutus voting DAP. So there's been quite a few DAOs that have tried to launch on Cardano, but now there's kind of no standard for how to handle voting. Mm -hmm. And so we were thinking of, because for Milkamana, we need a DAO as well. And so we're thinking about, you know, how to do this on-chain voting for the DAO. And so uh, there's only 15K proposal for us to, you know, come up with a standard for this, submit like a Cardinal improvement proposal or something similar as an open standard anybody can use. Mm -hmm. And then, so that's the DC Spark core. And then we have what we're calling DC Spark extended, which are usually not like core R&D, but stuff that complements it. So for example, we have like translation of the Milk Comeda documentation to other languages, mm -hmm. which it will be useful to onboard more developers onto Cardano. Um, but at the end of the day, if the Cardano ecosystem doesn't want to translate stuff into other languages, that's, you know, up to them to decide. We're, you know, making this an option if people want to, you know, have this and we'll see what they think. And then the third category is hackathons. So we have a lot of experience doing hackathons at, at our company, um, you know, and we want to do hackathons for uh, Milkamada. Because once we launch Milkamada, we have to go to Ethereum developers and say, hey, you want to launch on Cardano, you can do it now. You can do it through Milkamada and you can join the Cardano ecosystem. Um, but to do that, we need to oftentimes incentivize people to come on board, to spend the time looking into the ecosystem and deploying and all this kind of stuff. And so we're hoping that hackathons can play a, a crucial role and the problem with hackathons is that you need a kind of prize pool, yep. right? And so we made multiple proposals for hackathons where the Catalyst funding will essentially be used to fund the prize pool, mm. right? And so it just depends if the Cardano community wants to have these hackathons, yes or no. So we propose multiple different hackathons in different categories. And you know we'll see what people want, if they want any, any of them. If they don't want any of them, that's fine. Um, if they want us to do hackathons, uh, we're more than happy to do it. And if they want hackathons for stable coins, but not hackathons for gaming applications, you know, we'll do whichever one gets um, passed. So, you know, this uh, system is that if you're, if you're watching this video and you want to support DC Spark, um, you know, go check out the DC Spark core proposals I mentioned, and you just need to vote for five things. Um, if you're a strong believer in, in Milkamada and you really want to, you know, help us reach as many developers and users as possible, then you can spend the time, you know, reading to the other proposals and, and spending time voting for them. Um, but we will be focusing more on these, you know, five core proposals. Mm -hmm. um, the voting is in January. And so we'll have kind of more blog posts and, and explanations into these, you know, five proposals as, as time goes on. Um, so right now there's, we have like a video on our YouTube channel that explains, you know, what I explained with you right yeah. now, um, but we'll have, you know, kind of like blog posts with links to the proposals, um, yes. later on. Okay. Excellent. I think that concludes our interview. It's information loaded. Wow. That's amazing. Thank you, Sebastian. Definitely. If people watching this video, you want to participate in the new comment and test net or whitelisting test, then you can reach out to them in their Discord. You could also follow their Twitter and join the Telegram group. I will put the links in the description of the video. And you mentioned you have, what, five core proposals. So yep. I think it would make sense to just link the five proposals uh, onto the description of okay. the video. 20 would be too much, but I think five is totally manageable. <laughs> Thank you, Sebastian, okay. for joining. And I look forward to hearing more from DC Spark and from you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.